Greetings and welcome to another lecture in introductory psychology. This one deals with the senses, or at least it sort of does. It actually deals with the idea that we can perceive things out of the range of our normal five senses, hence the term extrasensory perception, often abbreviated as ESP. Now, generally there are thought to be four different types of ESP. The first type is called clairvoyance. Now, clairvoyance technically means clear seeing, and it's the ability to perceive something that is happening at the same time, but at a, at a range or through barriers that would prevent you from using your normal five senses. For instance, if you are 10 miles away, but you can see what a friend of yours is doing, or, or you can, uh, sometimes they will have people who can theoretically tell the color of a piece of paper by touching it when they're blindfolded, or if you can hear something from a huge distance. It, but, but it's something that's happening at the same time. Okay, It's not the same as telling the future. We'll get to telling the future in a little bit. But this is being able to perceive something at a distance or through barriers. Telepathy is reading minds. It's the ability to know what is going on in someone else's mind, what they are thinking, what they are seeing, what they are saying, again at a distance or through the barrier of the mind itself. You know, I'm thinking of a number between whatever, tell me what it is, without there being other cues that the person can use. By the way, that's more difficult than it sounds. Precognition is telling the future. Pre meaning before, cognition meaning thinking. This is the ability to tell what is going to be happening in the future, whether it's a short time in the future or a long time in the future. Uh, sometimes, for instance, people believe that they have dreams that are precognitive, that their dreams tell the future or, or something along those lines. Lastly, there's psychokinesis. Psycho means mind, kinesis means movement. And psychokinesis is the ability to move things or to affect things using the power of the mind, ranging from being able to move a ball to bending a spoon to any of a number of things that are done, theoretically at least, in terms of psychokinesis, telekinesis. Now notice that in here I am not including being a medium, also known as speaking to the dead. Uh, partially because, at least in my view, that requires a few too many assumptions. These are fairly clear, the clairvoyance, telepathy and stuff. There's one assumption, you can perceive it at a distance. But when you're talking about talking to dead people, then you have to assume that, first of all, when we die, something remains afterwards. Secondly, that whatever it is that remains afterwards wants to talk to us. And thirdly, that there are people who can talk to whatever it is that remains afterwards that wants to talk to us. And that's about too, too many assumptions for me to make. So normally, being a medium, speaking to the dead is not included in these types of ESP. So when I talk about ESP, of course, the first thing people want to know is, is there evidence? Does ESP actually exist? Do all of these people that we see having visions or helping police officers or whatnot, people on talk shows, is any of this real? And the short answer basically is no. For all of the research that has been done on ESP in the past decades, and there has been so much research done, a lot of it's been bad, but there's been a lot of research done. There is no good conclusive scientific evidence, at least none that can't be easily explained away. When people do find positive results, very often these positive results are very, very faint or very, very tiny which is a problem in and of itself, although that could be fixed if, to jump a little, you can replicate it, you could do it again with that person. The person is slightly out of the normal range in terms of a test of ESP. Can they do it again? And almost always, so far as always, really, the answer has been no. The other problem is that, as I said, a lot of the research on ESP that has been done has been done very, very poorly. What has happened is that people have not been able to, or not wanted perhaps, to come up with experiments that would effectively reduce the effect of extraneous variables to zero, or as close to zero as one could get. 
For instance, in one of the cases where researchers claimed to have people who could tell a color of a piece of paper by touching it when they were blindfolded, what happened was they were blindfolded with a strip of cloth. And when the strip of cloth was used to blindfold them and they were telling, they were perceiving somehow that color of the paper, they would often be tilting their head. That when the researchers looked at it, they realized that if you're wearing a blindfold like that and you tilt your head, you can look down past your nose, past the blindfold, and get a glimpse of what you're looking at. So they switched to a very effective blindfold of goggles that had been painted black on the inside, and the results went to chance. Okay. Or there was a case of a girl who could apparently tell what was wrong with people simply by looking at them. They called her the girl with the x-ray eyes. And so researchers came up with a test to see, okay, we'll get a bunch of people that have things wrong with them that would be visible if you had x-ray eyes or you could look inside. Of, they had metal plates. They had pacemakers. They had things, except she, of course, was not told that people had these disorders, there were these, these, these fixes. Pe she had to come up with it, and she was not allowed to talk to them. Normally, she would go and talk to people and ask them how they're doing and how they're feeling and such. When she was not allowed to talk to people and she was not told exactly what it was that was going on with these people and they were, would stand in front of her fully clothed and whatnot, she also went pretty darn close to chance. So in, in order to be absolutely sure that what is going on is ESP and not something else. The research needs to be done very, very carefully and very, very strictly. So, if there is no real good evidence for it, and there isn't, trust me, I would like there to be, but there isn't, why is it that people still believe in ESP? Why is it that people still talk of dreams that tell the future or talk of speaking with those who are far away in trouble or whatever else? And there's any of a number of reasons why. I'm just going to cover some of the more common ones, perhaps. The first is called the fallacy of positive instances. Now, what the fallacy of positive instances says is very simple. It says, we remember when we were right and the magic worked and we don't remember when we were wrong and it didn't. If a person says that they have dreams that foretell the future, they need to keep track not just of the dreams that did foretell the future or the dreams that they said foretell the future, given that we tend to reconstruct dreams, it's pretty dicey anyway, but they also need to keep track of the dreams that did not tell the future. If you think that you can tell who's on a phone or who, who is you know looking at your computer without it being turned on, if you think you could tell who just emailed you and you're right, that's great, but you have to keep track of all the times that you are wrong as well. Because the times that you are wrong are just as important, if not more so, as the times that you're right. I mean, anyone can say, well, yes, I knew that you were coming in before you did. But how many times have you thought they were coming in and you were wrong? Or how many times did you not think they were coming in and they came in? You have to keep track and compare all of those. Because sometimes, purely by chance, weird things happen. That's called a numeracy. Sometimes, purely by chance, you can flip a coin, a perfectly normal coin, ten times and get ten heads. That doesn't mean you're psychic. Sometimes perfectly naturally you're going to have dreams that perhaps tell the future, but how many times do you not? If someone flips, comes to me and says, look, I can flip a coin ten times and it comes up heads every time and they do it, the first thing, of course, I'm going to say is, give me that coin. <laughs> look at the coin. And then I might give them a coin of mine and then I'm going to say, do it again. Because replication is very important here. If something can't be replicated, the odds are it's not real or it's not controllable. Either way, it can't be studied. So that's a problem. Like I said, sometimes weird things just happen purely by chance. And if you're one of those people that it happens to, you're going to think that's pretty spectacular. I've had students sometimes go to a website and they do a test of ESP to see if they are clairvoyant, if they can tell what card is going to be next in this computerized deck. And for the most part, people score at chance. But every now and again, somebody scores not chance. Somebody scores in the, you know, you may have ESP range. And the first thing I say to them is, fantastic, do it again and tell me what you get. 
because anything weird can happen once. If it happens more than once in a row or happens more than it happens three out of five times or whatever, that's when we want to start getting very interested. And by the way, it's also what I tell people or a variation of what I tell them if they tell me that their dreams foretell the future. I say, great, keep track of all of your dreams, all of them. Every time you wake up, write down your dreams and write down everything you can remember because when we remember dreams, we tend to reconstruct them. And it's very easy to reconstruct a dream or a vague memory to match what's going on now. But if you write down that this is going to happen and that is going to happen and that is going to happen and then three weeks later it actually happens just like, that's impressive. Particularly if it happens often. Why else do people believe in ESP? We want to. We want to. In the stress chapter I talk about things that make stress less stressful. And one of the things that does is a feeling of control. And if you can know what's going on at a distance, if you can know what's going to happen in the future, if you can control things that you cannot touch, if you can tell what people are thinking, that gives you control. And that control can make you feel good. Or if even if you can't, if someone can, you can go talk to them. And that will give you a feeling of control that you might not have. And people want to. I, I realize I was talking about talking to dead people not being ESP, but that's a perfect example. People want to believe so much that those that have died are still here in some way and want to contact them, that they will go to great lengths to overlook the obvious. They will give answers to mediums and then be shocked when the medium says back to them what they just said. I mean, it's, it's amazing to watch this phenomenon. It's called cold reading. And the same thing happens with all... We, we want to believe. We want to believe so badly that we're willing to overlook the facts, essentially, because we want to. In science, we can't do that. In science, we have to stick to the facts. And the facts say that there is no good conclusive scientific evidence. But you wouldn't know that from watching TV or watching movies. Because almost never when there is a psychic ability claimed does it turn out in TV or movies or even talk shows that that does not exist, that the person doesn't have it. Mythbusters is one of the few shows that actually tries to look at this stuff objectively. And even they don't, as far as I know, they haven't really touched ESP yet. Okay? But most other shows, when it's, whether it's ESP or ghosts or whatever, it's assumed that they exist. Or Bigfoot. It's assumed that they exist. And the people who don't believe, of course, are the ones that are just foolish. I find very amusing that one of the very few TV shows that went against this trend, and even it wasn't perfect, but it did go against this trend, was an older TV show that you may have seen, you may have seen perhaps in your childhood. It was called Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo and the Scooby Gang would go and investigate ghosts and such, and the vast majority of the ghosts they investigated were not real. They were the neighbor. You know, if it wasn't for you pesky kids, I'd have gotten away with it. Well, yeah. You know, the thing is, though, that's it's pretty sad when a children's show is just about the only show on TV or in the media that actually presents science the way that, as far as we know, it exists. Now, because I'm saying this does not mean that ESP does not exist. It may be that it does, and that we simply haven't come up with a way to measure it or to test it or even to find it. That may well be true. I'm not discounting it entirely, but the fact that there is no evidence for it means that if people do believe that ESP exists or believe that they are psychic, they really need to start doing some nicely controlled scientific studies to prove it. Because simply saying that something exists and saying, oh, I had a dream once and it came true, unfortunately, will not cut it. <laughs>